Welcome to Health Matters. I'm your host, Maeve Shaughnessy. This week, we celebrate World Breastfeeding Week, and we'll be talking with BMH's lactation consultant and Lamaze teacher, Dawn Kersala. And she is coming up next. Dawn, welcome to the program. Thank you so much. I'm really glad to be here. Great. So, World Breastfeeding Week is this week. Uh, so let's first talk about the benefits of breastfeeding. Great, I'll be glad to do that. And we've actually talked about benefits for so many years and we keep discovering new benefits all the time. So um, a recent research study that was done found that over 75% of moms here in the United States wanted to breastfeed their babies for as long as possible. And here at BMH, we actually have a 92% breastfeeding initiation rate. Wow. So we're really glad to help moms with breastfeeding. And um, I, I would say, you know, I can certainly give you a laundry list of all sorts of things like less respiratory infections, less colic, less crying, less diarrhea. But I think that, that one of the things that has always really appealed to me is the fact that a baby needs three things and those three things are warmth, nutrition, and love. And all three of those things are really easy to do when you're breastfeeding your baby. So I would say that that's one of the big benefits. Wonderful. And so going off of that, what would be some drawbacks of doing formula feeding versus breastfeeding? Well, one of them actually has to do with that whole warmth, love, and um, nutrition thing that I was just talking about. Because I would never say that a mother who's formula feeding her baby doesn't love her baby. That's rubbish. And anyone who tells you that, like, get them out of your life. <laughs> um, but the thing is that breastfeeding is really funky. It's very hormonal. Uh, lots of dads will say, yes, that's true. And the thing that's hormonal about it is that when you have, first have your baby, everybody's uh, prolactin levels go up really high. And they've actually given prolactin to roosters, and when they do that, they start mothering all the chicks. So prolactin really helps us with our mothering skills and with the love that we have for our babies. And if you do not breastfeed, like when, when you are breastfeeding, you continue to get prolactin surges whenever you're breastfeeding your baby. A mom who, who ends up bottle feeding her baby um, and formula feeding her baby in particular is going to have a lot, she's not going to get those prolactin surges, so she's going to have to work a lot harder to do that. The other thing is that we're also finding that formula has some real drawbacks in terms of what happens to baby's health and to our health as moms. Moms who choose to formula feed actually have higher blood pressure, higher lipid levels, have more of a spare tire around their middles. Um, and if you've been, if you watch friends, neighbors, aunties, um, grandmas, you may notice that they're struggling with some of those things. And those are more likely because of our formula feeding generations. That's awful. I feel so bad that we never knew that. But the other thing is that um, we're, we also know that breastfeeding is anti-inflammatory. Think about all the things that we're learning that really have to do with inflammation these days. And so that's another big drawback of formula feeding. So it's great when you can choose to breastfeed and, and, make, it, and make it work. Sure. Yeah. So when we're talking about mom breastfeeding, is there any nutrition uh, guidelines that she should follow or anything that she should add to her diet when she's breastfeeding? I've actually heard people say, I'm not gonna breastfeed because I eat a lot of junk food. <laughs> Um, so I guess the flip side of our junk food society is that mothers in Uganda are able to do a really good job of breastfeeding their babies or South Sudan in places where people are starving. Very often moms can still keep their babies thriving while they're still breastfeeding because our bodies will give our babies good nutrients. Now we can actually improve the baby's nutrition. I think of things like the American Academy of Pediatrics actually suggests that you can take 6,400 international units of vitamin D a day and give your baby all that nice anti-inflammatory vitamin D, um, keep them from having rickets. Um, you can also uh, give your baby better omega-3s and omega-6s and DHA and ARA and things that we know are really good for brain development. That will go right into mom's breast milk. 
But in terms of calories, um, you want to reap the benefits of breastfeeding because if you eat 2,000 calories a day, you will lose weight breastfeeding. That's wow. pretty great. So you need about 300 extra calories a day. Mm -hmm. And if you your friends want to help you to breastfeed, then tell them to get you one small bag of M&Ms every day. <laughs> That's about 300 calories. So And don't carb load because you're exhausted. Go take a nap with your baby. <laughs> So what if breastfeeding is not going well? I know some women may feel that it may be anatomically related or perhaps something to do with the baby. So what, what would you say in that case? The first thing to do is to get some good help and don't go to Dr. Google first. <laughs> um, actually, the main reason why people stop breastfeeding, why moms stop breastfeeding in this country is because they don't believe they have enough milk. And most often that happens at two in the morning, the first night home. That's actually the first time that there's a big drop off in breastfeeding. So if you're feeling like, oh my goodness, I don't have enough milk for this baby or something is really wrong, my nipples are getting chewed up, what's not right here? I would say, don't go to Dr. Google. Call us at the birthing center or call Sally Pennington or um, who is with Children's Integrated Services. She's also an international board certified lactation consultant. Get somebody who knows what they're doing or even if you have a girlfriend who loved breastfeeding or your mom loved breastfeeding, have them watch you nurse and then see if they see anything and then go from there. Um, but I would say, you know, definitely avail yourself of the right resources that we have in this area because good support will help breastfeeding to work. Absolutely. So for a lot of women uh, heading back to work and they're breastfeeding their baby, what would you recommend? What would be some tips for them? The first thing I would do is go to vermont.gov and see what the state of Vermont has. We actually have over 40 breastfeeding friendly employers here in the Brattleboro area. BMH is one of them. And you can have be a gold, a silver, or a bronze breastfeeding uh, friendly employer. And what many, many moms find is they were so afraid to even broach the subject and everybody's already been worrying about it. <laughs> So it's really great. It's simple to find. It can be simple or difficult sometimes to find a place to pump, but in many, many cases it can be done and your employer wants you to stay working for them. It's hard to find good people to stay in jobs and moms who breastfeed and go back to work tend to stay with those employers because they really appreciate that help. So look at the Vermont.gov website. Um, take a look downtown this week for uh, during World Breastfeeding Week for our um, Cindy Twombly at the Department of Health has a nice display up there and you can learn more about our local breastfeeding friendly employers and then beg, steal, borrow or go ahead and buy a copy of Nancy Moorbacher's book Breastfeeding and Working Made Simple and she's very much into the don't make being perfect the enemy of getting it done because it can work many different ways just like mothering can work many different ways so Fall in love with your baby. Do everything you can to get your milk supply off to a good start. Um, make sure that you know what kind of pump your insurance is paying for. Um, moms who are on Medicaid can get pumps at WIC to go back to work. So there's lots of ways to do it right and lots of ways to make it work. And fall in love with your baby. Fall in love with breastfeeding. And enjoy this new and wonderful time in your life. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Dawn. And if you would like to learn more about breastfeeding, uh, you can feel free to call the birthing center at this number listed below or visit us online at bmhbt.org. That's all for this time. Catch us next time on Health Matters. Mm -hmm.